and welcome to round four of our mail order pickups. So today we're covering, I think, the last of the mail order, as well as a couple of in-store things, because like Target and Walmart, like they weren't closed. And, you know, you do have to go for supplies every once in a while. Now, I didn't, I am not running out of toilet paper. So anyway, we'll start with our Best Buy mail order. So, Come to Daddy is this Elijah Wood thing that I heard good things about. And I figured, you know what, let's just, let's just go for it. So I ordered that pretty much when I could. Uh, it was on sale slightly. You know how Best Buy does it where, you know, oh, new movie release. It's like, oh, it's on sale for $2 less. Wink, wink. And it's like, eh. So, I probably could have waited a little bit, but I didn't want it to be like the lighthouse where, surprise, it sells out. So, actually, I finally got to see the lighthouse, and it was amazing, like everyone said. I just wish I could have done it sooner. And then I've heard a lot about this, so Tigers Are Not Afraid. So, this was a steel book, actually. So, I whack at it like an idiot. And this is another kind of prestige thing that had a lot of great buzz, and that's why we picked it up. So I don't really know anything about it beyond by Isa Lopez. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. And it's supposed to be just utter madness. And then I've been waiting for this for a hell of a long time. I pre-ordered it forever ago. So the Aero video Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, which I've never gotten to really see this movie. Uh, I do have a stupid story about it, though. So uh, when I was little, I had heard of Elvira. I had no idea who or what Elvira actually was. None whatsoever. Uh, and my dad actually had this movie on VHS, uh, but he kept it with his just say other tapes and so for the longest time uh i thought elvira was one of those things <laughs> and i remember i remember stealing the vhs tape from my dad's office and watching it one time when everybody was gone and being very disappointed <laughs> which it's funny now but at the time eh. and you know this was Oh man, this was at least two decades ago, so I don't remember a damn thing about this movie. Um, but, you know, now that I know who Elvira actually is, and, you know, what the gag's going on, and what the gag is, you know, I'm pretty excited to revisit this. And there's a lot of stuff in here, too, so I can really, uh, I've been kind of curious to find out just more about, like, Elvira's entire thing, because... The stuff I do know is like there's a lot of there's a lot of history there, you know, like how she basically like won all the rights for her character from a boss who was kind of screwing whoever with that. Uh, I don't know it's it's a really cool story, which is also very long. So I'm hoping we get some information about it in here. So it comes with the standard Arrow booklet with uh, not quite as much reading as some of the other Arrow titles. Oh, a little tough to get out of here. Oh, I was using this as a bookmark. <laughs> Apparently, I, I did open it up and I did read a little bit into here. But it should be great. PG-13. Yeah. Uh, I was especially interested in seeing this, not because of like that whole backstory, but uh, a couple years ago I found Elvira's Haunted Hills, and I laughed so hard at that, like I loved it. <laughs> especially that one joke, this is a painting of Ant Whoever. An infamous harlot and slut. One man alone could never satisfy her. 
And Elvira just like not really paying attention to the guy's tone. <laughs> I hear you, Grandma. <laughs> so funny. Uh, so yeah, Elvira. Anyway, uh, returning to sanity. So on one of my runs to Target, I saw this. I don't know if it quite counts as horror. So it's uh, one of the anim WB animated movies. Uh, it's a thing about Scorpion, which I haven't gotten to see yet, but I'm sure it's great. Because uh, <laughs> I typically like the animated stuff that Warner puts out. Like, I don't think there's been a title that I've really not enjoyed coming out of that studio. So I bet this is I bet this is fine. Like, I heard some kind of mixed things about it, but it was the last Steel Book, and I figured, you know, if I don't like it, I can hawk it. And now getting into the Walmart finds, which, you know, don't shut it off yet. Walmart was actually pretty good. So I think I figured something out. Uh, what? So over the last few weeks, every week on Amazon, something is suddenly $5 for no explicit reason. It's like, oh, look, Mandy is $5. Or, oh, look, Shin Godzilla is $5. And these things, like, always sell out, like, right the heck away. Uh, oh, I got one with a slash on it. <laughs> Just noticed some damage on the thing I bought. Um, but anyway, so Walmart has, like, the $5 bin that, you know, you walk right by. You never give it a second, a second glance. Well, I took a stop, and I was really surprised by what I saw. I saw Mandy with the slipcover for five bucks. I saw Shin Godzilla with the slipcover for five bucks. I saw Mad Max Fury Road for five bucks. And I also saw these. So, Hellfest, which is... I've heard people kind of disparage it. But I've been wanting to see it for a while anyway because it had Tony Todd in it, and I like Tony Todd. So thank you for following me back on my new Twitter, by the way. I was really proud of that before when you followed me of your own volition on my old account. And uh, it happened again, so I don't suck. Yes! <laughs> but uh, anyway, so this was five bucks, and if you go to your Walmart, you might be able to find it for five bucks too, which... Uh, is probably pretty fair, <laughs> but I'm I'm sure I'll like it. You know, I can't think of the only slasher I can think of that I haven't enjoyed is like Sleepaway Camp two and three, which that's a whole other that's a whole other thing. Uh, and then they also had this, uh, The Eyes of Laura Mars, which this was one of John Carpenter's I think very first projects, like when he was getting started. Uh, I think he wrote it right. Screenplay by John Carpenter, so story by John Carpenter. Yeah, so this is this is one of his first things. I had heard it mentioned before in like different extras for different things. I think when you I think in extras for the Halloween movies that he was involved in, he's like, well, I wrote the Mars of Laura Mars, and that was the extent of everything I had heard about this movie. Uh, I wasn't sure if it had ever actually been made, uh, but then. Surprise! Five dollars at Walmart! So, it's put out by Mill Creek, who puts, uh, well, Mill Creek is kind of a weird label, like, they, they're like a budget label, but they sometimes get, like, really nice stuff, so I'm not quite sure how to, what to think of Mill Creek, but it actually does have an extra, uh, it's got a commentary by Irvin Kirshner, which, wait a minute, Irvin Kirshner? Did he do Empire Strikes Back? Where's my phone? No, no, we're, we're filming. Yeah, not now. But so, yeah, I'm... I've always been pretty curious about this, and I'm happy to have it so I can now, like, check it out. And it was $5, so even if it's... not great... Um, $5, who cares? <laughs> Take my $5. So that's about uh, does it. So I guess the moral of the story is um, 
check that discount bin. <laughs> Because damn! <laughs> because damn! <laughs> Take two. <laughs> I didn't show off Shin Godzilla because I I already had it and I already did that in another video. But I just wanted proof, you know, still cover. So yeah, hope you had a good time uh, hanging out with us and looking at all of our stuff. Uh, yeah, is it still rolling? Oh, we're still on. We now return you to whatever it was you were doing. Like, share, and subscribe. Feel free to yell at me in the comments about how sloppy this one was.